Hello, I am uh, uh, Dr. Sonia. I am a physician working in Kerala. Today, I am going to talk to you about a problem which is not so rare, rather very common in uh, clinical practice, that is hypertension or high BP. If we take the Indian statistics, we can see that nearly 25% of uh, people who are above 18 years of age are hypertensives. So that if we translate that in terms of numbers, considering the Indian population, we can see that the numbers are phenomenal. So it's a very common problem that is hypertension or high blood pressure. Let us begin with what is blood pressure. Uh, we know that heart pumps uh, blood into various uh, blood vessels and uh, these blood vessels in turn exert a, a pressure or, or a resistance to this blood flow. This resistance can roughly be termed as blood pressure. This, uh, a certain blood pressure, a particular level of blood pressure is essential in order to supply adequate blood and oxygen to all the vital organs. So that keeps the vital organs going. But when the blood pressure exceeds a certain level, the same vital organs are put to stress, they are overworked, and then they get tired fast. So our normal blood pressure is uh, usually recorded in terms of uh, 120 by 80 or 100 and anything uh, below 130 by 80 can be considered as normal. Of this, this 130 or the higher uh, value or the larger value is the systolic blood pressure. That is the blood pressure recorded at the time of contraction of the heart or pumping out of the blood. And uh, the next number that is 80, that is the diastolic blood pressure, which is recorded during uh, the relaxation of the heart. That is when the heart relaxes between the two beats, the, that is the diastolic blood pressure. So that is how a normal blood pressure is recorded. It is either uh, said to be 120 by 80 or 130 by 80. Anything below 130 by 80 or 140 by 80 can be considered normal. What we record, uh, what do we record blood pressure with? The instrument is known as sphygmo manometer, and we know that it can. There are mercury sphygmo manometers as well as digital ones, which we use at home, and they really make BP recording very a lot more easy. So, uh, sphygmo manometer is the device that we use for blood pressure recording. So, and uh, now come coming to the uh, definition of what is high BP or what is hypertension. Any recording of blood pressure more than 140 by 90 can be considered as hypertension. And uh, for a person to be labeled as a hypertensive, you must have more than two blood pressure recordings above 140 by 90, preferably in a very comfortable setting uh, when the patient, uh, the patient shouldn't have a smoke for at least 20 minutes and more than three, uh, two recordings of above 140 by 90, one can label the person as a hypertensive. But an interesting fact is when a person is sitting in the outpatient department or with the physician or with a doctor, the presence of the doctor and the unfamiliar surrounding itself may be uh, enough to put the blood pressure on a higher side. So when we record a blood pressure in the outpatient department of a doctor, the blood pressure may be high. This is termed as white coat hypertension. That is the, the blood pressure goes up looking at the white coat of the doctor itself. So that may be a false high recording. So if we suspect a white coat hypertension, we ask the person to record a couple of re re readings at home at his familiar surroundings when he is very comfortable and see if the blood pressure is still high. If the blood pressure is still high, well, then the person is a hypertensive and we need to start him or her on medications. So what are the uh, risk factors for hypertension? So what uh, we know that uh, the, 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 we say that uh, high salt intake uh, puts somebody at a risk of hypertension. As the salt is concerned, around four to five grams of salt, that is sodium chloride, is essential in our diet. 
but when the these dietary the, the dietary intake of salt per day exceeds this value well that may be considered as a high salt diet and it may predispose someone to have hypertension but another fact is that only 20 to 30 percent of hypertensions are salt responsive that no, uh, so uh, let us know that not all hypertensions can be controlled by salt restriction alone so only 20 to 30 percent of people may be benefited by restricting salt in their diet yet it is a good habit to always look at the label of food items you purchase from the shops etc to know that uh, the, the content of uh, sodium chloride is not very high similarly the uh, we need to have an average content of potassium in our diet which we usually obtain through fresh vegetables and fruits so having adequate potassium is good but when somebody is diagnosed to a high be a hypertensive the person has a tendency to move on from sodium chloride to potassium chloride uh, uh, a different variety of salt but that is not recommended at all what is recommended is cutting down on the salt intake itself the next risk factor is uh, hypertension and uh, diabetes and dyslipidemia or high cholesterol high cholesterol diabetes overweight being overweight and uh, being hypertensive all these are put together and termed as metabolic syndrome so if you have one component of this metabolic syndrome you are very likely to get the other two problems two or three problems eventually so when somebody is a diabetic when somebody has a cholesterol problem they should frequently check their blood pressure and make sure that they are not hypertensive so far then uh, smoking use of alcohol etc can also be termed as risk factors sedentary habits uh, not having uh, incorporating enough exercise in your daily routine also puts you at a risk of being a hypertensive uh then there is i would like to bring your to your attention uh, uh a new risk factor which we have recognized that is obesity that is being overweight with obstructive sleep apnea when people are really overweight and uh, when they sleep at night their upper airways get obstructed and there is inadequate oxygen flow into their lower airways Uh, and uh, they can have spells of lack of breathing which is which are known as apneic spells and the such people get to uh, tend to be drowsy or sleepy during the daytime such people with obesity and uh, obstructive sleep apnea are at a higher risk of developing hypertension eventually so these are a few risk factors which we commonly see these are the modifiable risk factors but there are certain non modifiable risk factors which are beyond your control like the family history of hypertension if your parents if your brothers sisters are hypertensives you are more likely to be a hypertensive and aging aging is something that is beyond your control so as aging age progresses the arteries or the blood vessels they become non compliant and uh, so they offer a more resistance to the blood flow and a person is more likely to be a hypertensive as the age advances so these are the few risk factors which uh, decide whether you are going to be a hypertensive eventually or not now diagnosis coming to the diagnosis of hypertension i told you that anything above 140 by 90 a couple of readings of these abnormal uh, blood pressure are uh, uh, good enough to put you uh, under the label of hypertensive but uh, strangely this is uh, one disease or for that matter most of the lifestyle diseases like diabetes hypertension or high cholesterol may not give rise to any symptoms at all these are all incidental findings mostly hypertension may be detected or diagnosed uh, during a routine checkup or you might have come to the doctor for something else you might have come for a diabetic check check up or you might have come for uh, uh, treating fever and you detect uh, you are get, you are getting detected as a hypertensive if you ask me the symptoms of hypertension could be 
uh, maybe a tightness in the chest while walking or while exerting. The patient may feel a, a, a sense of increased heartbeats or palpitation. There may be a headache, mostly at the back of your head. All these may be termed as symptoms of hypertension, but the, it mostly it, the, the diagnosis of hypertension happens incidentally when you have coming, you are coming for a checkup for something else. Uh, and sometimes we detect hypertension with a vital organ damage. I told you that when there is hypertension, most of our vital organs like heart, kidney, uh, uh, the uh, eyes, that is retina and uh, the brain, etc., get uh, affected. And uh, we know that the strokes, mostly 45% of strokes uh, happen in hypertensives. The strokes could be hemorrhagic, that is out of bleeding in the brain or clotting in the brain. Both these types of strokes are predisposed uh, in hypertension. The persons with hypertension are more likely to get a stroke of either nature than a non-hypertensive. So as far as heart is concerned, we can uh, we see that the persons with hypertension have thicker heart muscles. So that predisposes them to have heart attacks or lack of blood supply uh, in eventually. Then you have a retinopathy, you have serious kidney disease, even ranging from protein leakage right up to an end stage kidney disease where one would be required to undergo dialysis or other forms of renal replacement therapy. So hypertension is a silent killer. It may not give rise to any symptoms uh, but it can lead to a very uh, damage of very, very vital organs like heart, brain, kidney, eyes, etc. So that is a valid reason for you to decide that you want to treat hypertension well. So once somebody is diagnosed to have um, be a hypertensive, how do we go about treating it? Of course, uh, a trial of uh, uh, lifestyle modification is worth. That is, uh, one can... Uh, uh, give, uh, incorporate more exercise in the daily routine, at least 30 minutes of aerobic exercise, four to five days a week. Aerobic exercise uh, can include running, walking, jogging, cycling, swimming, etc. One can go into a healthy diet that is a DASH diet, that is uh, a special diet that is recommended for hypertensives. So uh, that is a prescribed diet for hypertensives containing a lot of whole grains, vegetables, uh, low fat uh, uh, milk items, and uh, uh, less of saturated fatty acids. So uh, we suggest these hypertensives to cut down on the salt intake, cut down on the bakery items, cut down on the red meat, and uh, uh, go on a diet or embark on a diet rich in uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and a low, for, uh, low fat dairy items. So this is a few more, uh, lifestyle modifications along with reduction in stress. Reduction in stress is easier said than done. We know that stress is universal and everyone has their own way or everyone has to devise their own way to cope up with stress. It could be reading good books, it could be gardening, it could be singing, listening to music, whatever. But you have to find a way which, is, which suits you to get rid of uh, the stressful environment if you are in one then uh, ensure that your sleep is adequate. A good quality sleep of six to seven hours uh, gives you some resistance against hypertension. So these are a few uh, lifestyle modifications uh, one can suggest to a person who has become a newly uh, detected hypertensive. But once you have implemented this for a couple of weeks, uh, one has to think of starting the person on a medication because you cannot go on endlessly waiting uh, as the hypertension or high blood pressure may put the vital organs at more stress. These vital organs would have to work against higher pressure. And we, we know that when somebody is working against a higher pressure, the person is likely to get exhausted fast. So the same holds true for the vital organs. 
the more you put them to the stress of hypertension or working against a high bp more likely that vital organs may sustain a uh, non retrievable damage so now we have uh, given 2 to 3 weeks of trial of uh, lifestyle modification now we have to decide regarding a medication there are a whole lot of drugs there is a whole armamentarium of anti hypertensive drugs so the treatment has to be individualized we sometimes see in clinical practice that the wife starts taking the husband's anti hypertensive pill which is not and vice versa which is not at all advisable the treatment has to be individualized many things need to be considered the other comorbidities somebody has the body habitat and so many other things the nature of work the uh, stressful whether the person is in a very stressful environment etc while starting on a drug especially in diabetics we have a special choice of drugs so never self medicate and always take a medical help before uh, embarking on uh, anti hypertensive treatment and uh, most of the anti hypertensive medications have a 24 hour uh only 24 hours of working period so once you skip a dose it's unlikely that you may have your hypertension or your blood pressure controlled well so try to be regular uh, try it, uh, to take it at the same time of the day and the indian studies suggest that uh, most of the indians require more than two medications to have their blood pressure under control so please do that under uh, medical surveillance medical help you may need to take more than two medications uh, which are chosen by your doctor there's no harm in doing that as long as you get your blood pressures under control and don't put your vital organs to more stress so they uh, always uh, hypertension is a highly treatable disease although it is symptom less sometimes it's very well treatable and by way of treating hypertension we can avoid damage uh, to our uh, very vital organs like heart kidney and brain so uh, hope uh, this video helps you in controlling your hypertension well and uh, uh, you manage to ensure a long uh, healthy functioning of all your vital organs thank you